Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 34 of Be With Me. We're going to go to the Garden of the Gethsemane today. I'm going to read from um, the book of Luke. It's in uh, three of the Gospels in a big way, and I'm going to read in Luke because it has a unique feature. This is from Luke chapter 22 and verse number 39. And as he came out and went as was his custom to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. There, And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise! And pray that you may not enter temptation. So that's from the book of Luke. And we find in the book of Mark that <clears throat> he falls on the ground. Another sweet thing in Mark is that he uses the word Abba. And he has the sweet time of fellowship with the, with the Lord, despite his soul being uh, sorrowful. And then the thing that Matthew adds is the repetitiveness he comes back to the disciples three times. Two times he wakes them up and encourages them again to uh, to pray and to really just watch with him. He doesn't actually say, pray for me. He says, pray for yourself. So the disciples have their own battle, their own temptation. Jesus tells them, pray that you may not enter temptation. And what is their forthcoming temptation? Well, probably two things. One is to uh, is that they all abandon Jesus shortly, <clears throat> and then uh, then the second temptation, at least with Peter, is that they would deny Jesus. Um, third temptation would be just that they would be tired and didn't stay with Jesus during this the most I think the most difficult part of the whole crucifixion process, which is this wrestling and this deciding in this great battle that Jesus had. So the disciples are fail in watching with him. They fail their temptation warning. Wouldn't it be great if, if all the temptations we face has this um, uh, warning light before it happens? We mentioned that the other day. All right, so that's from um, Mark and Matthew. And we find this the time of Jesus... I, I wanted to share it from Luke because the agony and the drops of blood and the, the difficulty of it seems to be more clear. It says, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Isn't that the truth, that that the pain of a situation uh, generates our best prayers? And I had not seen before that an angel actually came to him to strengthen him during this time. We find that it lasted a good bit of time. It says uh, an hour in the scripture that it, that he had these fall down prayers or kneeling prayers or falling on his face. Matthew says. So obviously this is a very very difficult uh, time. And I think what's difficult about this, and I think this is the low point of the crucifixion, and that's taking into consideration all the suffering that is to follow. So here's the thing that struck me today is I think this is the low point of the crucifixion. That is the most difficult thing of the crucifixion, perhaps the greatest, maybe it's the high point, um, uh, but this this deciding, this resolving, this yielding and committing, not my will, but your will be done. It, isn't it true that we all perhaps will face something, that the teaching point is, of something we don't want to do. I have a number of friends that have gone into hospice and 
have made a decision to die. And after after the decision, then then there is suffering and there is difficulty, but there's like this burden. And I, I sense the same thing with Jesus is you don't get one inkling from this moment on uh, that there is any... Uh, uh, doubt or turning or anything like that with Jesus. He is just resolved to do the cross from here on out. All right, so here's some applications, I think. Uh, even Jesus had situations that were not to his liking and had to yield his will to the fathers. And likely, we will tell. And uh, wouldn't it be great if we had people alongside of us like the disciples to watch with us uh, with this. And I just challenge us, like, what is our fall on the ground prayers? What is What do we might need an angel and sweat drops of blood or agony? Um, and then this yielding thing. Sometimes Jesus prayed that this cup would pass. The answer was no. And sometimes the answer in prayer that our deepest desires are are not met. And so then what do you do? So the answer is no. Then what you then what do you do? And this is Jesus is the great example of this. Is are you enduring something that's against your will? Uh, and then you ask the Lord to take it away, and He says no. And then what? And then this is what Jesus does: is He makes the Father's will His will, even though it's something He doesn't like. And I think that's the that was the hardest thing. Uh, I called it initially the lowest point of the crucifixion, and maybe it's the highest point of the whole suffering and crucifixion, is to make the Lord's will that is against your will to make that our will. So this is the beginning of the crucifixion. It's difficult from here on out, but I think this passage might be the most difficult as the, as Jesus yields his will to the Father. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Thank you for listening. Stay with me now as we uh, really start the process of the suffering and trials and crucifixion. This is the great week. We call it a great week for a reason. Stick around. You'll find out. See you tomorrow.